Welcome, everyone, to the Legends Podcast, the show where Infinite and I come together. We talk about everything going on in the Nintendo realm. We talk all things Pokemon. We talk all things Nintendo. So if that's interesting to you, make sure you stick around and check out the entire video. And with all that said, Infinite, how are you doing? Great. How have you been? I'm currently on my fall break, so I'm just vibing. Oh, that's very nice. I'm good. I um, am currently not on a fall break. I am doing a lot of school at the moment, but... It's been pretty good. <laughs> it's okay. Classes are kind of fun in a way, but but yeah. So let's get right into the news. Um, and the biggest thing that happened with the Pokemon stuff is we got a bunch of like random Pokemon trailers just randomly dropped all over the place. So uh, we're going to just go through kind of a list of all the new Pokemon that have been announced. And first up, we got Wiglet, which is a Pokemon that I am thrilled about. I love Wiglet. I made, like, a whole video about Wiglet. Wiglet is my favorite. That blew up, too. I know. That went crazy. That was wild. But <laughs> that Pokemon just it looks really funny to me. You know, it's not... I don't think it's anything, like, too crazy. It's, like, a Diglett cousin, kind of. But it does look really cool, in my opinion. And then we got Belly Bolt, which was a brand new Pokemon that was just announced. And it's adorable. It looks great. And I looked into this Pokemon a lot more. And you know the things on the side of his head, Infinite? You know the... Yeah, what about it? Those aren't eyes. Did you know that? What are they? Wait, what it's are they? It's where his I energy expels. And then the thing that you think is his nose is his two eyes so it's just like a derpy smiley Seriously? face yes damn <laughs> it's a wild i know hmm. i was confused but all right and we got forever rig which is a evolution of giraffe rig which i mean go ahead i guess I, now if like there was a pokemon that to get like, evolution i never anticipated forever rig i never anticipated forever and i never anticipated giraffe rig getting evolution and what's funny is that forever rig is basically like Giraffe-rig, but inverse. Giraffe-rig is basically G-I-R-A-F-A-R-I-G, mm -hmm. whereas Farafarig is worse, so like now the G's on the inside and the, F, the F's on the outside. Um, it seems like a pretty interesting Pokemon. I wonder how it's gonna play, both like just in comp like competitive, but also like in regular gameplay. And then on top of that, we got Cloth, which was announced as like kind of like an alpha Pokemon or a Pokemon that's like giant, which I'm, I mean, if they're bringing back some aspects of Legends Arceus, I'm I'm down for, you know, yeah. Clop, I'm down for that. Yeah. He looks cute. Um, for Raffarig, I don't know how you pronounce that. That was impressive. Because I was I so lost. <laughs> like, I was like, oh my god. I would have had to sound that out like a five-year-old. I could not have done that. Yeah, it was like one of those Pokemon. Like, I don't know, for me, like, palindromes are never really that difficult to, like, figure out. Yeah. And I'm also good. I think we're good with alliteration, so like palindromes drums don't fuck me up. Well, that's good. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, and then we got along with that trailer of Belly Bolt, we got Lono. And that's a streamer Pokémon, the electric gym leader. What do you think of her Wait, infinite? Wait, is it, it Lono? I thought it was Iono. Is it I? I thought it was an I. Is it an I? Cuz when I look it up, it's never it's ever it's I O I O N O. Yeah, it's I. It's an I. <laughs> What? Yeah, it's an I. Because why would they put a lowercase L to begin the name? I don't know. Pokemon was trying to be trendy. Yeah, oh, that's... it's an I. It's I know. Oh. Which is still very hard to pronounce. Well, that's embarrassing for me. Okay, well. <laughs> um, how do you say it? I know? I think it's I know. Interesting. Like, Inter I'm like 85% sure it's I know. <laughs> I believe you fully. Uh, interesting. What do you think of this? The streamer guy. They took like the weirdest and like most outlandish aspects of like streamers and mm -hmm. made that their biggest focus. And I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Like she seems like she's probably like a really like fun trainer and like probably be like a really cool person in the real yeah. life. But like she's just so out there. It's like you do not represent me at all. <laughs> oh, and like the hair things and her crazy hair and her crazy style. It's she reminds me of a, she reminds me of a Lisa, but like a worse version of a Lisa. Mm -hmm. Where like she has that cool energy, but also like really, really like like ecstatic and like energetic. Yeah. yeah. Like at least it was more mellow and like relaxed. Like I know it's not that. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, this girl is not not mellow at all from what I've seen. But yeah. And then other than that, in the Pokemon realm, we have also found out that you can wash your Pokemon during picnics, which was cute. It was it was adorable. It's a it's a fun addition. It's kind of throws it back to like Nintendo dogs a lot. I don't know if this has ever been in. Has this been in a Pokemon game? Infinite where you could wash them. Um. 
Kinda, 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 because in, I think, I think both in X and Y, mm -hmm. um, I think in X and Y, Auras, and the Sun and Moon series, mm -hmm. I think you were able to, like, watch them with, like, PSS, and, like, um, Traversal Trap, or, like, um, I can't remember what the name of that thing was. I, so, it was an option before, but I don't think it's, like, as extensive as this one. It yeah. might have been a thing in Sword and Shield, too, but I don't remember to save my life. <laughs> Yeah, if it was, I never did that, but uh, hey. I think I think it's cute. I think it's really cool. I mean, it's always kind of fun to interact with them in a different way, so I, I like that they're going kind of all in on that. Um, right. And yeah. Like, I know, like, in Sword of Shoe, you could, like, throw balls and stuff, and, like, your Pokemon would chase it, and, like, you could let your Pokemon out in, like, camps, and they would, like, hang out and, like, have a little bit of personality. Yeah. Um, and even in, even in Legends of Arceus, like, you weren't able to interact too much with them, but, like, what, like... What they did do was like make it so that they could come out of their Pokeball and like right. walk around a little bit. And it was really cute and fun. Yeah. 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 And apparently we could also breed them during the picnics. I wasn't sure if that's what it was because like you find like eggs near picnic location. So I'm wondering if that's how it, it's gonna like be implemented. If that is, that's pretty interesting because I'm so used to like there being like a daycare and stuff. But like if it's like we could breed them during picnics, that'd be pretty cool. Right. Yeah. I'm pretty positive that's what they said that you can breed them just like at the same time. I've never done that in a Pokemon game. Have you? Have you ever bred? Like, Pokemon breeding? Yeah. I've done it a few times. Like, when I was trying to get into, like, Pokemon, like, VGC and all that stuff, mm -hmm. I definitely tried to, like, breed a few Pokemon for, like, the better nature, better, like, not better IVs, because I don't know how to do IVs, but, like, better nature, um, better stats, the right gender. Like, the, like I typically do, like, a little bit of breeding just to, like, try and figure out, hey, what's the most ideal Pokemon I can get? Yeah. And considering I just started doing Wi-Fi battles again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna need to figure it out fast for, yeah. sword, for um, Scarlet and Violet. I think I've just never been like, as intensely into Pokemon enough to go out of my way to get the perfect Mon, you know? And that's pretty much everything that has gone down with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in um, this month uh, so far. But the other biggest thing that happened was the Mario movie, and that was a really big, exciting thing, uh, and a brand new trailer dropped, so we are going to go through it kind of scene by scene, break it down, talk about it, like, throughout the whole thing. So, we open and see Bowser's, like, super, super menacing ship as he drops it on the Ice Kingdom, and then a bunch of Koopas line up to introduce Bowser, and I thought this was a really, really awesome introduction. Right, like if, for example, if this is your first time into like the Mario franchise, and now it's like your first introduction with Bowser. I would say it's a really solid introduction. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to bet it's not a lot of people's first time because Mario is kind of an iconic character. But like for like the new kids who are like currently like looking for like who might be like going to the movies for the first time, maybe like haven't really interacted much with like a video game. I think it's definitely like a really good interaction with like yeah. getting to know who Bowser is and like very little. Yeah. Too. And he comes off the ship and is voiced by Jack black and i thought the voice fit it really really well i thought right. the way he's animated too and like you can kind of see jack black's face in bowser almost i just i think it looks really really cool i think he did a right. fantastic job and i think what makes like jack black bowser so great is that you can't tell it's jack black mm -hmm. at all and i think that's what's really really good um because like I've seen Jack Black in other anime movies, like, for example, the Kung Fu Panda series. Right. He did all three of those movies, and his portrayal of Bowser does not mean a poet at all. Right. Um, and I like that, because it shows that like, he has a lot of range. And also, Jack Black is an actor, and has a character. He's a really interesting guy. Me too. I think um, he's a great... So the fact that he got the role for Bowser is, like, really great. Yeah, I think it was a really good casting choice. And then the penguins kind of attempt to like, fight him back, and they show their power using snowballs, to which Bowser just, like, stands there and takes. And it's kind he's of like, hilarious. So if I remember the trailer correctly, he has like a complete deadpan on his face too. He's like, <laughs> yeah. like does not care at all. No. Like, what is going on here? That was funny. Yeah. And then the penguin was like, do you yield? And he was like, and the way Jack Black said, I do not. And then like, kind of like in his menacing and then snickered voice, it sounded so good. It was right. like, oh, this is like kind of a scary Bowser. Uh and then we Which you don't get too often. No, not really. And in the beginning of the trailer, when it like first starts, I was like, oh my god, this is like the Bowser from Bowser's Fury. Right. Because you get that shot and you don't really register that it's a ship quite yet. And then, but then afterwards, I was like, okay, it's not quite as cool, but still very crazy. Imagine, imagine that giant Bowser I know. appearing. That'd be oh my god, that'd be like, 
It'd be like it'd be like a Shadow of a Colossus kind of fight, where like it's yeah. like literally just Mario really small against a giant Bowser, which I mean that'd be pretty cool, but like also cool. probably would like be a slow fight. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It'd be more probably in the genre of like a Godzilla movie than like right. Yeah, and then what happens next is Kamek picks up all the penguins throws him to the side, which was, like, kind of impressive. I mean, I didn't... Like, Kimmick is very, very powerful. Bowser just ignites the entire kingdom of the Ice Kingdom and burns it to the ground, which was a crazy show of really? power, and it was really cool that... Right. We got to see, like, how insane he was. Then when we cut, and we see that he is on the hunt for superstars. Not the power-up ones, like, the ones you get at the end of the level, though, I'm pretty positive. There's kind of been a debate right. online, but I'm pretty positive it's, like, the galaxy stars that you get at the end. Right. This. It's funny, because when I looked at those, my mind kept thinking about, like, superstars from, like, Mario Party. Oh, like, that's what came to yeah, my mind. Yeah, Well, those are, like, the based off of the same, like, as Mario 64, right. so... Yeah, that's, that's, I would agree. Yeah, and then he's like, who's gonna stop me? And then we cut, and it's Mario, and he gets shot out of a pipe, thrown onto a mushroom, and then it's the classic Chris Pratt voice, and he's just literally like Andy from Parks and Rec, and he goes, what is this right. place? And then, like, I don't know. Right. It's close. Uh, honestly, that part of the trailer kind of killed it for me. Yeah. Um, Toad's voice, like, I expected it to be a little higher pitched, but I could understand why they didn't have it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine a high-pitched hope for, like, an hour and no, a half. No, that would be Dear painful. God. That would be very <laughs> That would be painful. annoying. Keenan Michael Key, I'm pretty sure, is that that toad that spoke and voiced him. I think he sounds pretty good, so, like, they, they, they pitched him up a little bit and stuff. But, yeah, the toad, like, freaks out, and he's like, don't touch that. And then Mario, the way he's animated, the way Mario's animated is actually really cool. And a lot of people kind of were off-put by his face at the beginning, because it's, like, more right. proportion to human facial structure. I think it's good and I think it's important so that he can like properly emote and stuff and right. you know do emotions and and in this it showed pretty well when his eyes widen and he jumps back and he's surprised so I think it looked really really nice then basically Toad and Mario just set off to the Mushroom Kingdom into which Chris Pratt says this like really bored Brooklyn accent Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. And then it ends. And then we think it's over. But then Luigi comes and he's chased by a bunch of dry bones. And that was actually really exciting. I thought this part of the trailer looks so cool. I wonder what that part's about. I'm wondering if they're like already trying to tease sequel with that. Because like, Maybe. I'm wondering like what role Luigi would play in this. Because tip, like remember, like the first Mario game was literally Mario versus Bowser. Right. And if they're following, if they're doing what like Sega did, um, with like the Sonic movies where like it's originally Sonic and then Sonic and Tails and then Sonic Tails and Knuckles. I'm wondering if they're gonna like do something I feel like like that. I, yeah, maybe. I, I, I don't think they would show it that far in advance. I think Luigi's definitely in this movie because they already announced his voice actor here. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. A lot of people like on the internet are talking about the fact that maybe Luigi and Mario get shot out of different pipes. So like when we see Mario oh. get shot out of that pipe, Luigi gets shot into one in the Boo Kingdom, and then it's kind of okay. like Luigi's Mansion-esque, which I think would be really, really awesome. I got a little horror to the movie. Right, yeah, yeah. And then That'd be cool. I That'd think be it's cool. about them meeting up in the Mushroom Kingdom and then trying to stop Bowser um, right. from getting all the stars. A lot of people are wondering if it's going to be like the classic like princess movie where he takes Peach... And then Mario has to save Peach. I don't know if they're going to do that quite yet. Because I feel like they have some setup to do. Because movie stories are a lot more involved. And a lot more people like really care, obviously. Because that's the main thing of a movie. As opposed to a video game. So I think they need to set everything up a bit. Oh, no. I would say the trailer was like... Like, okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would say the trailer is about like an 8. I would feel yeah. like the animation quality was really, really, really well done. Yeah. And like Jack Black and Toad were like really well voiced. I mean, even Luigi was really well voiced. Um, I was like the biggest fall is just like Chris Pratt. Like, right. I'm sorry. You're a good actor, but like you need to change like you need to change like how like you like you like just like talk when it comes to like a certain character because like mario is definitely not the same character you get from like star lord which is definitely the same right. character you get from like parks and rec and right. like that's like the biggest downside to this trailer it just it's just too like typical yeah too, tip too chris pratt and like i understand if they wanted to give him more of a like a normal voice because you know you don't want to listen to like the the charles martinet like super enthusiastic wahoos the whole time right but he could have still had some type of like Italian twang or something going on with his voice that set him apart a little bit. And especially in that beginning, he just sounds 
just like Chris Pratt, like you were saying. Right. Like, even if you told me, even if you didn't tell me who was, like, voicing that actor, I would immediately picked up, like, hey, this is Chris Pratt, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, like, going back to the animation quality, I think it's super impressive. I think a lot of people were pretty worried about that, because Illumination is not a company that really does well with artsy animation or making stuff look right. realistic, making stuff look nice. So, uh, I think it was really nice that that is something that they actually focused on here. Just like even the shading, the character models, everything looks really well put together, really nice. It's, oh, it's definitely a step with like the Minion movies. But I feel like the Minion movies have its own art style, which is why they get to like, kind of get away with that. Yeah. Um, but like developing a whole new art style for like this movie was a really good idea on their hand. Yeah, and I just think a lot of what they go for is very basic shapes and very like, it's just, it's like the cheapest animation they could get that still looks fairly okay so they can get away with it. I think they kind of did out with that here and were very focused on making a good product, making something that represents the games and stuff. And while they did change up some of the character models, it all still looks really, really good in my opinion. Question of the day today and in the comments or in chat, you guys can definitely let us know what you're thinking about this. What is your go-to Halloween game? Infinite, you can start us off with that. You know, it's funny because I don't really play horror games like that. Yeah. So I feel like my my next like best option is a game that can make me feel something, that can make me feel something like a strong emotion. I would say in that case scenario, it's like Kingdom Hearts 2, which is like a really interesting pick for like a Halloween game. It's not really a Halloween game, mm -hmm. but it's like a game that has a really like from start to end, like, it's, like, a kind of a really sad story. It's a tragic story for some characters. Mm -hmm. Like, we do get some, like, good, like, um, we do get some, like, upbeat moments for, like, um, Sora and the gang. But, like, Roxas' story makes me cry every single time. It's such a sad story. Yeah. So, like, I don't have a Halloween game, but, like, if we were a game to, like, get me, like, to feel something more than just, like, hey, I'm, like, in a state of euphoria when I'm <laughs> playing video games, it would definitely be Kingdom Hearts 2, especially in the beginning. Or even 3 5 over two days. Duh. Both of those games make me feel so. <laughs> wow. What is Kingdom Hearts like 2's whole story? I've, I've never played a Kingdom Wait, Hearts have game. have you not played- Oh god, okay. Um, shoot. Oh god, no. This is gonna be a topic for a conversation. Um, Brief okay, so... summary. Brief summary. <laughs> summary. You're asking- you're asking something that's not possible. Okay, alright, alright. <laughs> like, we could do that, like, in the po- in, like, after the podcast, but, like, this is- that, like, explaining Kingdom Hearts is, like, crazy a bit of a sit down yeah it's a little crazy <laughs> okay i really want to get into it because i like disney a lot but it's I just... a really good franchise it just takes a bit to getting used to yeah and also everything it's been on like i wanted to get it on the switch but then it was cloud and i don't, don't do it. have the other ways to play the game so uh it's on xbox now it is that's true i guess that's it's true. on xbox it's on pc and it's on ps4 they, they got to port it everywhere and i'm like okay that's great um yeah I have my PS4 edition. I'm keeping my PS4 edition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, my go-to Halloween game, I just finished it, is Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, have you yes. ever played it? I have not played any of the Luigi Mansion, Luigi Mansion games. Like, I like, I, <laughs> I feel like we do this every time we, like, talk, where it's like, hey, have you played a Mario game? Like, I haven't played a Mario game. I grew up on Sonic. I was like, yeah. I grew up on that Sonic, like, like, that 90s energy. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't grow up on Mario. Okay. Um, but I, I have seen gameplay of Luigi Mansion. It looks pretty fun. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's really fun. I have, like, I'm making a little Halloween special for the channel. And nice. it's going to be all about Luigi's Mansion. Because that game took me three years to beat. Which... Why did it take so long? Sounds ridiculous. I would get so pissed off because the, there was these puzzles that, like... That, like, would make sense if I knew that they the his move set really well but i right. didn't because i would get mad and then come back and then get mad and then come back and so like taking such long breaks in between just made it so that i would completely like forget what was going on or what my move set was um, and so i would get frustrated with a puzzle i'd leave because I was frustrated, and then I'd come back, and I would get more frustrated, and then I would just leave again, and so it kept being this thing until I finally, like, I looked up a guide, not to, like, go through it, but to be like, okay, I'm at this floor right now, what am I supposed to be doing, and then it finally clicked, and then I started, like, going through it, but that was literally, like, three months ago, and then I stopped right before the final two bosses, 
and because I got okay. frustrated trying to beat the bosses, and then I went back on Saturday, like last Saturday, and beat the entire thing with uh with a partner playing as Guigi, which was actually like really really great, but it took me so long and it was always my game when i had nothing else to play that i'd be like okay i'm gonna try to get through luigi's mansion this is gonna be the time that i get through luigi's mansion it just never happened except for now which oh you finally beat it yeah and it was kind of perfect timing because it was around halloween and stuff and so it kind of got me in the spirit and then afterwards we watched hocus pocus have you seen that movie i have actually yeah (laughs) i had never seen it until we watched it or i may have but i like didn't remember it it was so good. It was so funny. I've, I don't know, but I got all into the Halloween spirit pretty much after that game. And yeah, I mean, it's smooth. It plays really well. There's a lot of really great things about it. And the problems I had with it were very much just my own fault. So like, it's a good game. And I want to go back and play the ones on the GameCube and the 3DS, but... We'll see if Wait, I was the most recent one on the Switch? Yeah, Luigi's Mansion 3 was oh, on the Switch in 2019. I thought it was on the I thought it was on the 3DS. No. There was Dark Moon on the 3DS, and I think that was 2014 okay. or, or earlier than that. And then there was the one on the GameCube, which was forever ago. Um, but yeah. I I want to go back and play that kind of a lot, so maybe one of these days I will do that. And the next thing we've got here is our mini game that we were talking about. So Infinite, would you like to describe our mini game that we've picked out for this week? Okay. So this game is basically Mary Kill, but instead of Mary Kill, it's Kill Party Run. We're referring to Pokemon. So we're gonna pick one Pokemon that we would kill, one Pokemon that we would put in our party, and one Pokemon that we would personally run from. Mm-hmm. Do you wanna kick us off with your, with your three? Absolutely. So my three, I have, well, I'm gonna give you three and then you tell me Okay. Kill party run. Okay. Are you ready? All so right. We're gonna we're gonna go, and these can be any Pokemon, uh, but just like make sure the other person knows it. That's mostly for you because I don't know all of them. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll keep them to ones that like you, you have definitely seen at least in Legends. Arcus, okay. Awesome. Sure. Perfect. Perfect. So we have Pidgey. Okay. Zubat. Okay. And Butterfree. Ooh, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. Shoot. Um, All the okay. flying guys. The flying guys. Um, I'm keeping better free only because of that one anime episode. I can't. I can't <laughs> let it go again. I'm sorry. I can't say goodbye to butter free again. <laughs> no, that was tragic. That was, like, that was like that was tragic. That was such a sad episode when we were younger. I'm like, oh no, butter free, get back. I like how everyone our started. age knows that too. It's just like scarring right. for an entire generation. <laughs> Like, we gotta hold on to Butterfree. So, like, even when I was doing, like, my Nuzlocke of cancer recently, I would get a Butterfree. I'm like, I'm keeping you to the end of the run, no matter what. Yeah. Um, shoot, now it's a question. Do, do you want to kill Pidgey or do you want to kill Zubat? Um. So, we have... I would say... Ooh, that's a hard one. That is tricky. I'm, I'm killing Zubat, I'm, oh. and the reason I'm killing Zubat is because there's too damn many of them. Yeah. That's what I <laughs> would do, too. Zubat. That's what I would do, too. So I'm running from Pidgey, and I'm killing the Zubat. <laughs> okay. Really good. Really good. All right. Okay. okay, my three for you is Staravia. Uh-uh. Give me that. Right there. Wait, I don't know the first one. Staravia? It's Starly's Evolution. Oh, okay, I do know that. The yeah. purple one. Star... No. Starly. Oh, I know Star You. See? Oh, okay. <laughs> um... Give me another one. Okay, let's do that. Let's do another two then. Um... Scizor. Okay. Garchomp. Okay. And... Weavile. Okay. I would... I'd put Scissor, Scizor, in the party. Powerful guy. I I appreciate him. Um, I'd kill probably Guard Champ. Yeah, he's gonna give us a lot of XP, so he's gonna go. And then what was the last one? I forgot. Weavile. Weavile. And we're just running from that thing. It can just do whatever it wants to do back there. 
Fair enough. Yeah. All right. And we'll go what through it? this one more time if you would like, because yeah, I down. have I have another very interesting three. We're gonna go fire starters. Are you ready? Tepig. Okay. Score bunny. Fue Coco. Ooh, that's a hard one. Um. Okay. Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. Okay. I'm killing Score Bunny. You're killing him. And the reason I'm killing the reason I'm killing Score Bunny is because I'm sick of seeing them in Pokemon Unite. Okay. I am so sick of that right. bunny. Fair. Um, I am. Ah, uh... I'm keeping Tepig. Okay. I'm putting Tepig in my party because Tepig does not get enough love. Like Tepig has been shafted, mm -hmm. like most every Pokemon fan. Like people say it's the worst starter. I like it. It's cute. It's fun. Mm -hmm. So I'm guess I'm running from Fuego. All right, interesting. All right, you gave me starters. I will give you. Ooh. All right, let's do let's do let's do starters as well. Okay, perfect. I'll know these probably. Chikorita. Okay. Snivy. Okay. And that's a good dark one. Bulbasaur. Oh, interesting. Okay, I really like Snivy because she's like all sassy, but. I think I'm gonna kill Chikorita, um, which I feel bad about, but it's fine. Uh, and I will probably, hmm, I'm probably gonna run from Bobasur. I appreciate him, I like him, but no. And I'm gonna get Snivy. Snivy's evolutions are pretty cool too, so. It's fair. Yeah. I like Snivy a lot. It's actually one of my favorite grass type starters. Yeah. Like all the grass type starters, with the exception of like Chikorita, genuinely are like in my favorites. Yeah. And I feel like they just don't get enough love because like they're considered the most useless of the three starter types. So I'm like, right. that's not fair. Like just balance the just balance out the starters because like yeah. if you look at it, fire types are weak to rock, ground, and water. Mm -hmm. Water types are weak to electric and grass. And grass types are weak to poison, flying, <laughs> fire, ice, and um just what was the fifth one? So many. I don't know. There's a fifth one. I think bug, maybe? I think it's bug. Well, like it's just unfair because like grass types are considered are, cons are consistently shafted. Yeah. Not because like they're bad Pokemon, because they just have a type that's like gets them screwed over. Yeah. I know. Like I even made a short saying, "Hey, make water types with the poison just to balance it out a bit more." God damn it. That's funny. Okay, your whole short thing with the uh, the controversial opinions or whatever is like the funniest thing because I was like, I this is a really good idea. So I did one about Smash Bros. Okay. And I was like, controversial opinion, like, Omega stages are the only way to go in Smash Bros. And if you play with items, it's that's crazy. Because I... I agree with you 100%. I cannot play with items in Smash. I hate it so much. It makes me so mad. They just, like, disrupt the gameplay. Yeah. Like, I get that they put it in there to, like, cause a little extra chaos. But, like... We don't need it. You can go from, like, winning to, like, behind by, like, one stock or two stock. Yeah. Just because of the fact, like, items are, like, in, in play. And you can just, like, get randomly just chucked off the stage by, like, stage... Like, right. I, I hate it so much. So, like, the, like the gust wind, for example, like literally, it's just an edge garter. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. annoying. Yeah, no, it's terrible. All of it, though, like, ah, so I made that, uh, like, controversial opinion thing. And those do really well. That's a really good idea. So I'm sorry that right. I took your idea. I didn't think it was going to pop off, but it's popped off. Pop and I'm off. like, I'm, I'm down. They pop off. It's really um, cool. And what's, what's crazy, I actually had people argue with me on um, why water types shouldn't be deployed. And I'm like, all right. You know what? I'll be fair. Make poison types also weak to water. God damn it. Like, what do you want from me? <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, just make poison. Like, water types need a little bit of a nerf. It's been too long on top. Yeah. A lot of people were like, and well, Smash is a party game. And I was like, okay, and? Like, Smash is a, Smash is a party game. What's the last time you went to a party and played Smash? Smash is, like, the most intense Nintendo game we have. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, if you play it that way, which is how I prefer to play it. So I was just like, I was like, come on, guys. A little wild here. Then we're going to go into what we've been playing. And Infinite, do you want to start us off with what you've been playing as of late? I have been, I've kind of shifted a little gears. I've still been playing Pokemon Unite, but mm -hmm. despite my better judgment, I've decided to go back and do some Pokemon Wi-Fi battles and Sword and Shield. And evidently I am both very rusty, but exactly where I was when I left because I still suck. Dang it. <laughs> I still suck. 
Um, and I did get some, like, good wins. I did get some, like, really good plays. But, like, overall, my chat kind of just bullied me for, like, four hours Jeez. on Saturday. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> they just kept going into me. And I'm like, all right, I'm done. I need to switch to something that's not going to drive me insane. And then subsequently switch to Unite, which kind of just, you know, kept poking the insanity pair for me. Yikes. Um, but I've also gone back and started playing Kingdom Hearts 1 again. Um, oh, fun. And I definitely want to do this on stream, um, but I, I love playing Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts is a really great franchise. Mm -hmm. And, like, I've been watching a lot of, like, like videos, too, of, like, people who's, like, less plays of Kingdom Hearts. And it's just, like, one of those games that I just can never let go. It's, like, a really great franchise. But what about you? What have you been playing? I know you've been playing Luigi Mansion 3. What else? I have, yeah. So, Luigi's Mansion kind of took up most of my weekend, but for the rest of the the month so far i've been playing a lot of smash bros uh but not by myself i have this like every time because in college just like hang out with friends right. a lot just because like there's not a lot to do other than that so we always like go over to my friend's house and then we'll play smash for for a long long time and so i've gotten pretty decent at it like in that sitting like where i'm pretty good in that sitting but like once i you know actually play people who know how to play smash then it's different but i just started trying to switch up my main because before i've had a lot of mains in ultimate so i had i had pit i had little mac i had who was i for a while i was banjo for a second i was min min for a long time i've been min min for a while which is because i like really liked the arms franchise and I like playing as her a lot, but I wanted to switch it up because Pikmin 4 is coming out. So I was like, I'm going to get like ironically really good at Olimar because people who are good at Olimar are scary. Like, right. It's that one character you never see coming. It's impressive. And so I have been training with Olimar and I like went to them to hang out with, you know, them and we started playing Smash and I started like going off with Olimar and it was probably one of the proudest moments of my life. I was... I was going crazy and everybody was like, haha, you're playing Olimar. And then I like went off. So, so that's what I've been doing mostly. And then I've also been playing a little bit of Splatoon 3. I kind of like, I didn't fall off, but it's just like. You, you and the whole internet have been playing a little bit of Splatoon 3. <laughs> yeah. I like always go back to it, but I finished the campaign and then I'm just you know like playing the 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 turf battles and the rank modes and stuff and a little bit of salmon run and i really like it but i always need to be connected to wi-fi when that happens and i have college wi-fi and it's really really bad most never of the time. good and never so, good no matter what school you go exactly. to exactly <laughs> so it's hard to kind of do it at some points and then also right. i think for splatoon it's a very involved game and lately when i've been playing games i want to kind of like relax i think so i've started kind of playing that a little bit less but I used to do this thing with Splatoon 2, where because I played that game for its entire lifespan, like from the day it came yeah. out, all the way until the day Splatoon 3 came out, and I would play it all the all the time, and so I'm just kind of like going in and out of it, but I'll definitely like return to it and go back to it and play like salmon run and stuff i've really been liking you should play you should play splatoon 3 infinite if you do i will get okay here's the issue here's the issue we can play it together it's so fun 3, I, I would get splatoon 3 but i have scarlet and violet in november right i have sonic frontiers i think it's this month or next month oh, i have sure i forgot about I, I still need to play new, new automatica mm -hmm. um Kingdom, uh, not, uh, not for a while, um, Tears of the Kingdom's coming out in, like, May. Like, I am so backed up on games I want to play and games that I'm, like, gonna get really soon that it's, like, if I add one more game to this pile, I'm gonna go crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, what I find interesting about Splatoon 3 is it was literally followed up with Overwatch 2 that dropped, I think, last week. Oh, yeah. Um, have you, have you tried that by chance? No, I'm not, like, an Overwatch person, almost at all. They're very, very, very different, but... Oh, yeah. But yeah, no. Oh yeah, for sure. Good. It was like I, I I played a bit of Overwatch one. Um, definitely want to get back into Overwatch. I want to try Overwatch too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I like my friend was actually streaming it in our Discord. A nine hundred person queue. Jesus. For context, that is larger than two B two T's queue on max peak times. Jesus. Okay, that may not be completely true, but like still, a nine hundred person queue is pretty damn long. That is that's insane yeah. it's insane oh my god 
I don't know. The only game like that, which isn't even like that, but like the free shooter that I play, I play Fortnite kind of an embarrassing right. amount, but it's just because it's so easy to play with other people. And it's like, for instance, my dad's probably going to watch this episode, but I play it with my dad sometimes and right. it's really fun. But the new season, the skins that they have have completely fallen off. And my proudest thing with Fortnite is that I've never bought anything in that game. I got enough free V-Bucks to get the battle pass. And then I got the battle pass and got enough V-Bucks to keep getting it like time and time again. But I don't think I'm going to get it this this season just because it looks so lame. They're trying to bring all these like Fortnite's own characters into it, which is dumb because right. nobody likes that. Everybody who plays Fortnite likes the fact that you can play as Bruno Mars and Tony Stark. Like, you gotta give us some, like, random stuff in there to make it fun, you know? I haven't played Fortnite in a while, but I've been meaning to pick it up again just to see how insane, like, shit has gotten. Yeah. It's fun. Um, it's so I definitely like... want to try and pick it up again at some point. Yeah. Maybe we could do, like, a collab stream in there at that some point. Like, play, play some Fortnite. Fortnite till we win. We definitely could. I'm, like, I'm not good at it necessarily, but I'm, like... I'm like pretty decent and it's it's really fun to play with other people so I'd definitely be down to do a little collab stream with that. And with that we're going to move into the next segment which is viewer questions and these viewer questions come mostly from our discord so if you want to you know leave any viewer questions you're watching this out there you have some questions you want us to answer definitely check the description because we're going to have both of our discords in there to which you can join and then you can ask us questions in that when we ask. And the first question we have comes from my Discord and it says, other than Charles Martinet, who would you pick to voice Mario if you had to pick someone other than Chris Pratt? Infinite, do you have anyone? Anyone but Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> anyone, yeah. Um, um, okay, but for, for real, I don't know why. I feel like Robert Williams could pull it off if he were alive to do it. Mm -hmm. I feel like it'd be an interesting take, but I feel like he could pull it off because he's like really good at impressions. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, maybe, do you know Gabriel Iglesias? Do you I know Gabriel Iglesias? I don't. He's a comedian and he's like one of the funniest oh, comedians. Oh, yes, I do. The, 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 yes. Fluffy! Yes. Yes. I love Fluffy. I know. Like, I, I, like, when I drive to school, like, I always have, like, me and my mom, like, we listen to his, like, <laughs> um, his, um, shows while we're driving. I think, I think Gabriel Iglesias could pull it off. He's also really good at impressions. I think he would, like, pull it off really well. Mm -hmm. What about you? I feel like it would be Charles Martinet, but just, like, toned down. But, you know, other than him, just, like, anyone who could do a good, solid like sort of accent like like honestly <laughs> and this is just the like 19 year old girl in me but if they gave it to tom holland i think he could do a good job he could do an interesting job that, that'd be interesting I would, I would love to see how that goes he has but just like the fact that he can he's british but he can do the american accent which is like one of the right. hardest accents like i think he could probably easy easily put like a little bit of a twang on that american accent and then give it some more life with mario but right. yeah that's my like kind of answer to that and the next question we have is if you if could you, oh, oh go ahead i was gonna read out you go ahead if you could give one gaming franchise an anime adaptation what would it be and why do you want to go first or should i you can go first i would say the Legend of Zelda franchise, I feel like it'd be like a really, really interesting like mm -hmm. anime to like be done. And like every like every like episode, every like season could be like a different like game. Like we could start with Legend of Zelda, right? Uh, Legend of Zelda 2, we could do Link's Awakening. And it'd be like really interesting because like here's the thing. Most of the Legend of Zelda games are connected with like that timeline, mm -hmm. but they're kind of like their own like story, with the exception of some, like with Breath of the Wild 2 being a sequel to Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Um, is it Majora's Mask a sequel to Ocarina of Time, or is it the way around? Uh, Ocarina of Time has the sequel Majora's Mask, so Majora's Mask is the sequel, okay. yeah. Yeah, so I feel like there's some games that could definitely, like, be, like, definitely put as an anime where, like, one's, like, a sequel to the other, but something that also we don't own standalone anime seasons. And I, series, and I think it'd be really interesting just to, like, have it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for me, I... I think a Kirby one would be really cool. I know we already have... We have that one from a long time ago. I think it'd be really cool if they brought it back. But one that would be like probably wholly original would be a Metroid one. I feel like they could do such a good job with Metroid. I I don't watch anime, so I mean that's like I don't know a lot about that sort of like what makes a great anime or whatever. It would definitely have a niche. I can tell you right now, it would definitely a Metroid would definitely have a niche yeah. for anime. Yeah, and I think 
I think they could just do some really cool stuff with it. There's a lot that you can tell about the Metroid story and stuff in that medium. It's a really like involved kind of story at this point and they could and it's confusing to go from like game to game to game. So if they would just give us like one timeline of that story, I feel like it could do really well. And and yeah, that's probably what I would say other than like Kirby, which I think already has one. The next question we have is, with Microsoft and Sony buying game studios, what studio or IP would you like Nintendo to obtain? Do you have any infinite? I'm still trying to think about this question. Like I was like literally thinking about this entire time. Yeah. I still don't have an answer for it. Okay, I can um, go while you think if you would like. So the developer Alpha Dream went out of, like they went, bankrupt basically nintendo didn't do anything about it and that developer if you don't know makes all the mario and luigi rpgs so mario luigi paper jam bowser's inside story dream team stuff like that it all comes from from them and they they do really great stuff i think those games are a ton of fun a great jumping in point for rpgs and they have a lot of mechanics that kind of remedy a lot of the problems i have with turn-based rpgs it annoys me when you just sit there and take damage and it's just like well, in real life, I could just move it out of the way or block or whatever. And you can kind of do that stuff in these games. And I think they're really, really good. And if they're moving away from the RPG mechanic in Paper Mario, they should give us one that actually does have a solid RPG mechanic. So I would love if Nintendo would buy them so that they could bring that franchise back because they do some really amazing work and the, the graphics and the sprite works that they do are really great. And I hope they, if, if they do buy them, I hope that they don't kind of bring them into this 3D polished medium and they keep them as sprites because I think it really adds to the charm of the game and those games are just so fun and so amazing and some of like my earliest experiences with like Mario RPGs so yeah that's what I would say okay I still don't have an answer honestly yeah. I don't know what to think for this question it's okay I feel like there's not really another one than this but I I guess there's third party stuff but I don't even sure. know what that could be. Uh, so when it comes to IPs, would you bet would would do better under a different company such developer? Which developer would you would choose? I personally believe Pokemon as a company would do a lot better. Like the Pokemon, like Creatures Inc. Mm -hmm. would do a lot better under a different IP that's not Nintendo trying to force out a game every every few years. Mm -hmm. Um, as for what they could go under, I feel like I don't know. I don't know, I think every, like, big, like, like IP is kind of, like, different in their own way. Mm -hmm. I definitely wouldn't trust it with Sony. Um, I feel like Sony would, like, definitely change some things that would not make, make it a lot less, like, playable. Mm -hmm. um, and save Xbox. So, like, finding a different place to put it would be difficult, but I feel like it just needs to get out of Nintendo's, like, thumb of control. Because, like, I feel like we get so many, like, rushed Pokemon games right. that end up kind of, like, becoming mid-games in, like, passing. Like, for example, like, Sword and Shoe was definitely, like, a mid-game in passing because it felt kind of rushed. They feel like they took time with it, mm -hmm. which is really interesting because we have games like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which they give so much time to work on because yeah. Breath of the Wild was really supposed to be on the Wii U and then they ported it to the Switch. Yeah. But I'm like, why can't you do it with Pokemon? So I feel like Nintendo, like, just needs to let go of Pokemon and give it to, like, another IP who's willing to treat it with a little bit more respect mm -hmm. instead of rushing out and, like, putting games out almost every single year, if not every single two years. I would also go with Pokemon, but I think I would take a little bit of a different approach because they're under Game Freak. freak and, right. and I think Game Freak is kind of a lot of the problems of it as well. Sure. Like, Nintendo is not perfect, but I think Game Freak, like has created this schedule where they have to put out an anime they have to put out trading cards they have all this merchandise surrounding this ip coming out on time so it's a lot of pressure on it to come right. out when it needs to and so i think if they would give it to another team like what you said the the people who make breath of the wild if they would give pokemon to that team it'd be amazing and i think they could do some really good stuff and i think if it was under that umbrella nintendo might see it as more of a a quality franchise otherwise other than a franchise that just puts out stuff every single year at least once if not twice like it's definitely a big money maker for nintendo yeah. but like in the grand scheme of things like it wouldn't hurt to give the, the franchise more time to work on games i agree yeah absolutely 
And the next question we have is, are you getting Scarlet or Violet, and what starter are you picking? We've kind of talked about I'm, this a lot, but sorry, go ahead, Infinite, take it away. Ironically, someone in the chat also asked the exact same question. Okay, um, very cool. <laughs> and I, I think I I think I finally figured out which one I'm going to get. I think I'm going to get Pokemon um, Violet. Okay. I think I'm going to get Pokemon Violet. Actually, no, sorry, Scarlet. I'm, I'm going to get Pokemon Scarlet. I think I'm going to get okay. Pokemon Scarlet. And as for my starter, I've been like, like balancing between the three for like the longest and i know i gotta make a decision soon mm -hmm. i think i'm gonna go with um i'm gonna go i think i'm gonna go quaxley oh very i feel like cool. out of the three we have seen the least like we have seen i feel like okay so we i know for me like i do my first playthrough of every game with like only new pokemon and pokemon that you can only find in this region mm -hmm. and we already have a fire ghost type that i definitely want to try out and we already have um small lift that i definitely want to try out mm -hmm. So I, I want to try out Quaxley because I feel like we have not gotten a water type announced to us yet with the exception of Wiglet. And I mean, Wiglet seems cool, but like, I want to try something that's not a, like off-brand of another Pokemon. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go with Quaxley for my first playthrough. That's a good one. What about you? I also kind of like went back and forth quite a bit, but in the beginning. So I've had Violet locked down for a while. I'm pretty positive that's the one I'm going to go for. Okay. I just think that kind of the futuristic vibe of it, like, I really like that. I like the way, uh, is it Miraidon, I think is his name? The the tra travel per Pokemon. I think it looks right. much cooler in, in Violet. Uh, I think it just kind of works better there. And, I mean, I don't have, like, too much of a reason to pick Violet, but that's mostly what I'm going for. I also have friend and he's gonna pick scarlet and so we'll you know like trade back and forth between that so it's not gonna matter like too much uh but yeah and the starter that i'm gonna be picking there pretty sure is foy coco i've pretty much always gone okay. with fire starters i feel like every time i pick a different starter i get annoyed and feel super underpowered going through the beginning of the game it's funny because i think about it now quaxi's gonna be the first water starter i picked since greninja <laughs> And like that's the second water starter I picked first. Every other time I picked out of grass or a fire starter. Wow. I've only ever picked um Froakie and now Quaxley as my first um starter as a water type. Wow. Yeah. Which I find really crazy because I'm like, we have got what nine sets of starters now, or is this ten? I don't even I know don't at this know. point. A lot. Yeah, this is this is number nine now. Wow. Yeah, that's now, out of lot. nine, I've only picked the water type starter once. Jeez. For my first playthrough. Yeah. I don't I've never picked one other than the fire type. And it's not even like just because I'm like, oh, I have to pick a fire type, but I've always liked their designs the most. Like I think Fue Coco, in my opinion, like looks like he's my favorite design out of all of them. I like Quaxley's design quite a bit, but I like Fue Coco's more. He's just like a little red cro crocodile. I feel like it's just, it's really cute. So You know, while we're here, why don't we go down like each generation and see which starter did you pick first because i know okay for me i haven't played every order... generation of pokemon but i will do my best all right so for kanto i picked bulbasaur first i picked for Charmander. johto okay for johto i picked cyndaquil first mm -hmm. did you pick did you play johto um no no okay interesting <laughs> um for hoenn i picked Trico first. What about you? Have you played through Hoenn yet? I don't yet? think I did either. You're missing on a you're missing on really a really good region in Hoenn. Okay, well, um, I'll go back and maybe play the older games. Pristino, I picked um, Chimchar first because I love Infernape. Oh, I also picked Chimchar. Yes. Right. It's a really star. It's a solid starter, honestly. Yeah, it is. For Unova, I picked Tepic first for my first playthrough. I also picked you? Tepic, but I didn't finish that game. For Kalos, I picked Froakie. I didn't play that one. Interesting. I haven't that's played interesting. a lot of like the the 3DS ones, actually. That that's fair. Um for Alola, I pick I pick Litten first. Mm, yeah, I didn't play that and one. And I fair. And it's funny because like Litten has become the bane of the bane of existence for like every VGC player. Mm -hmm. Like they hate um Incineroar. 
because i think it's, it's, it's like it does too much at once and i think people just hate it for it oh that's what that um, involves evolves into that's yes it evolves wild. into center war yeah <laughs> wow um people hate in center war it's like one of people's like least favorite pokemon in like AGC. Mm -hmm. Like the, one of the world champions, like Vimi despises it and hope it doesn't get into Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> like he hates it that much. I'm like, okay, fair. Yikes. Um, and then for Galar, I picked what's the bunny again? Score bunny. There we go. I picked oh. Score bunny for my first character. I also picked Score bunny. Alright. Yeah. That's. It. I mean, the fire stars are pretty consistent, especially since fire Pokemon in general are not exactly the most common type in the game. Yeah. To run into so like that's like the main reason why people would pick five starter yeah yeah i really so, like, like not bunny if i like i thought his design was really cute i thought they actually did a right. pretty good job designing those pokemon from sword and shield like i thought the sabo was pretty good don't remember the grass starter but what's crazy is that this like out of the, all the starters these are people's least favorite design starters even, like going through their entire like For going through the entire evolution online like like in those it's just general like all the galar starters people don't like them that much huh i think a, a part of the hate might be attributed to the fact that people are just like not a fan of like scarlet and Violet, assorted shield kind of pokedex yeah but, like in general people do not like these starters at all like they're like, their least favorite starters hmm. yeah that's what um, i've heard too i don't know i like score bunny i think he's pretty good but yeah that's pretty much all the questions we've got right is there any questions in chat or are we good um that, the chat question was quite literally the um, exact same thing <laughs> it was quite literally uh what was the question i just saw oh are you getting scarlet and violet which we just answered right. um i'm not getting scarlet i'm getting i'm getting scarlet i'm not getting violet yeah i'm getting violet so so yeah and that is pretty much all we've got for today's show so thank you guys so much for joining us you can find me right here on this YouTube channel. I also have a Twitch that will be in the description. And I have like a little Instagram where I do some like behind the scenes update things. If you want to check that out, also in the description. Infinite, where can they find you? You can find me when we do these live on Twitch on my on my Twitch channel. Link will also be in the description. And you can also find me on YouTube where I try to make content consistently. I'm I'm getting I'm getting there. I promise I'm getting there. Josie's like Josie's kind of pushed me to get back into it. Um and you can also find my Discord, which will be down in the description where we talk about a lot of different, different games, in particular, mainly Pokemon, um, Legend of Zelda, and other franchises. Yeah, and if you guys want to ask questions like we just did for this last part, definitely add those uh, Discords because I have a whole little subsection for those questions. Infinite always asks for them, so just be aware of that if you want to get more involved in the podcast. Also, we do a little after show over on Infinite's uh, Twitch, so check that out if you would like to as well. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching Infinite. Thank you again so much for being here. It's always fun to talk. Of course. And yeah, we'll of see course. you guys later. Bye.